Hi, and welcome back to Relevant and Reformed. I'm here with Pastor Rich Kukin. Good to see you again, Nick, and welcome, everybody. Good to see you, too. And if you can't tell by our, our pile here, <laughs> um, we're going to be talking about Bibles today. Yes. We actually had someone ask us to do that's, a that's correct. an episode on yeah. Bible translation, and, and yeah. it's kind of interesting. I was doing a Sunday school at Pompton Plains Reformed Bible Church, and somebody asked me about that, but I'm no expert on biblical languages, so... I'm going to defer to you. <laughs> That's a dangerous thing to do. So, Nick, Pastor, to, to which... defer to me. But the, the topic was exciting. I mean, it is. because everybody wrestles with that at one time or another, in one way or another. You know, what Bible translation should I use? And part of it is that we have so many in the English yeah. language. There's some languages, yeah, like Italian, where there are two evangelical translations. No kidding. You only have to pick between two, and no one kidding. is very outdated. Wow. So it's pretty easy. Wow. So pastor, what are your favorite Bible translations? What would you recommend? Yeah, Nick, thanks. And again, for our listeners, uh, hopefully their edification. Um, Historically, you know, brothers and sisters, the King James was the the benchmark, right? Mm -hmm. The 1611, it was called the authorized version, Nick, I think historically. It was revised in the 1700s. Okay. But originally by by the Church of England scholars, right? right? Uh, Old Testament built on the Masoretic uh, Hebrew text, um, New Testament Testament, the Textus Receptus, uh, a beautifully written translation of the Bible. Uh, many old timers memorized a lot of scripture in the King James. Yeah. In fact, Nick, that's why um, I, I, brought, I brought a couple King James with me because in my pastoral ministry over the past 37, 38 years, uh, especially visiting uh, hospitals, nursing homes where elderly folks were, um, I would often read Psalms to them. You know, 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And as I'm reading it, they would start reciting it with me. And they had it memorized in the King James. And so if I was bringing an NIV or an NAS or something, it got stumbly. And so um, I actually bought a, uh, a beautiful, you know, leather-bound King James Bible to use in my pastoral ministry. Uh, and also sometimes these old saints would say, hey, when I pass, use the King James at my funeral. And so I, I, had, to, I had to get, a, you know, a very durable copy. But if I could say on a personal note, um, again, during the course of my pastoral ministry, if you'll look at this one, and Kyle, this is showing, I guess, these, bring it up a little bit, like like this, right about there is good. Uh, this is a pocket size uh, King James uh, Bible. And as you can see, it's pretty well worn, but not just by me, uh, by the person who gave this to me. And Nick, if I, t- I turn to the opening here uh, in, in this Bible, uh, here's what is written. It says, this Bible was given to me when I entered the service of my country in 1943. Mm. Uh, the, a lot of pastors uh, used to give servicemen Bibles when they would go into the armed forces. Uh, it was given to me uh, when I entered the service of my country in 1943. It now was given to Pastor Richard Kukin uh, for his uh, service in the work of the Lord. And he has Romans chapter 8, 28, the Lord works in all things for the good of those who love him, signed Renzel Steenstra, and he dated it, Nick, 226 93 is when he gave it to me. It was given to him 226 43, mm. and he said 50 years to the day. And so I share this with you because Bibles are so precious in and of themselves, of course, the inspired word of God, Holy Spirit inspired word of God, Theonustos breathed out by yeah. God, but they become very personal to people, and, and the version they use uh, is very, very important. Um, and so the King James has served the church historically for many, many years. Many people love it, but it is a bit archaic in its language and so on. So in the days of my youth, when I was a little younger, perhaps than Kyle, um, I had started reading the living Bible and that is a paraphrase, uh, in, in the late sixties, early seventies, all the young people I knew, use the living Bible. It's a paraphrase. Now, this was given to me uh, between us um, by a girlfriend in high school. Now, Kyle probably doesn't believe I had a girlfriend, but um, but I did. She <laughs> gave me this living Bible, and, it, and it's a paraphrase. Now, just to show you what uh, the paraphrase idea is, uh, Nick, if you take any version you've got there, and let's go to Philippians chapter 4, and I'm going to read some verses that are probably familiar to a lot of our, um, a lot of our you know, listeners here. Uh, Philippians 4 in the Living Bible, paraphrase, beginning in verse uh, 4, says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are unselfish and considerate in all you do. Remember that the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank Him for His answers. Now, that's easy to understand, but it is really not literal to no. what the Greek says. In fact, when it says, 
Remember that the Lord is coming soon. The Greek says, as we'll see in a moment, uh, the, the Lord's coming is near, or the Lord is near. The Lord is near. The ESV is says the Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. Yeah. Now, that can be interpreted either he's near at hand to me, his spirit is with me, or it can be interpreted his coming is at hand. He's going to come soon, which is the way the living Bible interprets it. But that's an interpretive question. And so they should leave it in the literal and not paraphrase. But we were all in, in the days of my youth, on the Living Bible. Yeah. In fact, I can remember one Sunday afternoon reading the book of Ecclesiastes through, and it was it was riveting to me, but a paraphrase. And as I, as I grew in my faith, Nick, by the grace of God, I realized that whether it's the Living Bible or Good News for Modern Man was another one in my day, a lot of paraphrases out there, they could be helpful in a sense, but they are also dangerous because they are not accurate translations of the word. They are paraphrases. Would you say they'd be better thought of as a commentary? In More, a sense. Yeah. One, I think who is Ken Taylor? Is that who wrote the Living Bible? I think you guys are so young, you won't even remember. I think it was the guy's name was Ken Taylor wrote this. Um, so it's his interpretation of the Bible. So it's his commentary. Really well said. He butchers Acts 13.48. <laughs> He does. He I'm does. Not, I'd be afraid to read it, but oh, since yeah. you brought it up, we're going to go there really quick Sorry. because that's a great wor- verse on I, I election. Think, I'm thinking Acts thirteen forty eight. I Nick, think I'll, I'm right I'll about read this. it since I've got the Living Bible right here. Uh, when the Gentiles heard this, they were very glad and rejoiced in Paul's message. And as many as wanted eternal life believed. Oh my goodness, heresy! <laughs> her- 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 yeah, it says. Oh, oh my goodness. In the ESV, it says, "And all who are appointed to eternal <laughs> right. life believe." Oh my goodness, it's worse than I thought. It's amazing. <laughs> I turned out as I did by the grace of God. Um, so anyway, so so that we had the Living Bible in the days of my youth. Well, then along comes um, Dr. Ed Palmer, was the associate pastor at my home church, Preakness, a Christian Reformed church at the time in Wayne, New Jersey. Executive Secretary for the NIV Bible Translation. Yeah. Great man of God, powerful preacher, great theologian. He's the Executive Secretary for the NIV. In fact, if any of our friends have an NIV study Bible, they may see in the front a, te- a, a tribute to Dr. Palmer, Dr. Edwin Palmer. I have a 1978 NIV, which is the okay. first full printing. Yes. His name is in the beginning. Is it really? Yeah. Is it really? Dr. Edwin Palmer, godly man, had a profound influence on my life and on my call to the ministry, in fact. So I I really l- got hooked on the NIV. Yeah. And the NIV used a translation um, uh, philosophy called dynamic equivalence. The idea was that it was going to be as faithful to the original languages as they could be while making it as understandable as possible. Yeah. So it's not it's not a word for word uh, literal wooden translation, but it's not a paraphrase. Dynamic equivalence was the idea, but very readable, very easy to understand, and yet very faithful. And so you go to that Philippians four passage, Nick, for example, that we read a moment ago uh, in the in the Living Bible, Philippians four. Drop it down to verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. See, there's what Mm -hmm. you had. The Lord is near or at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So a literal translation easy to understand, more so. I think the uh, King James on that verse says, be careful for nothing. Yeah. And it makes you sound like, be careful, be careless about everything, <laughs> you yeah. know? You know. So so the the improvements that some of these newer versions made, in fact, here's another Bible. Uh, this is a, a, um, a Reformation, you like the Reformation Study Bible. This is in the N, uh, the ESV. This was given to me also by a dear friend, uh, this, this one from Pompton Plains. It's in this like case, I feel like it's like a collector's item. I'm almost afraid to use it, but it is just a beautiful English standard version. And Nick, you're much younger than me from what I understand. And uh, a lot of the seminaries these days and young guys are going to the ESV. Yeah, Can you comment on the ESV? They've almost all gone to the ESV. Okay. My first exposure to it was I went to a Bible study in college. I was raised with the NIV. Okay. I memorized ESV, spoke ESV. Really? <laughs> thought all Bible-believing Christians read the NIV. <laughs> and... Uh, that's where I was exposed to the ESV. So that's one of the two really I use okay. on a regular basis. Okay. And one of the difficulties in a Bible study, like you mentioned, is everybody's got a different version. Mm-hmm. And so if you're reading around the room, there's a richness in that. Like, well, what does your translation say? Because the, the new translations are great. They, they, they're faithful, especially since the finding of the Dead Sea Scrolls oh, yeah. around 1945, 1946, 47 around there, northern shore of the uh, Dead Sea. But uh, And that's where Margaret and I had the opportunity to visit. But... Um, 
it's difficult to read around because what verse are they in, you know? Um, and you can't do responsive reading in a worship service because everybody's got, you know, different translations, uh, yeah. but there's a richness there. And, and now my personal comment, Nick, finally, is um, the NAS. Uh, this, this Bible, brothers and sisters, was given to me, you can't even read the cover anymore, uh, by my dear sister uh, when I was in high school, late, late high school. And uh, no, I take it back, it was, it was college because the reason I got the NAS was I asked a Bible professor, Miss Wanaselia, former missionary at King's, what is the best Bible version? And she said, the New American Standard is the most literal. And it's, it's charges, it's a little wooden because it is so literal, but I wanted accuracy. I really wanted accuracy. Yeah. And so um, I love, I've read this through so many times. In fact, Nick, I wanted to comment to you. The binding broke on this. And if, did I hear one of your family members tell me your mom had a special Bible? Yeah, her original NIV that she got in high school, we took it and had it rebound. No kidding. Um, oh, it's, it's a book bindery in Jefferson, New Jersey. They no did a kidding. great job. I'll so, have to put, we'll put that in the... In the uh, description. Her the favorite of, Bible, and as a family gift, well, from what I understand. It was her birthday gift. It was her birthday. Yeah, And, we and you had rebound. your mom's Bible rebound. Well, I probably yeah. should get this rebound because I just love it. So the New American Standard uh, is, is my favorite personal devotional Bible. Readability, I love the New International Version still. Now, the new, I think it's called the TNIV now. Uh, that they, you can't get the old original 1984 NIVs yeah, anymore. Now we're up anymore. to the 2011. Okay, 2011 is the latest. And some of it um, I took issue with because if the if it said Adelf, Adelfo's brother, it'll say brothers and sisters, or Adelfoy would be the plural. Yeah. It'll say, instead of just dear brothers, it'll say dear brothers and sisters, uh, or instead of man, it'll say people. And it drove me crazy, Nick, for a while. Uh, and then I realized, you know what? It means it generically. I'm not going to die on this hill. So <laughs> we are using that at Pocono Reform Bible Church, the, the, new, uh, in, the newest version of the uh, NIV. But I've had co- folks comment, especially from a non-faith background, background, how, how much they enjoy it because it's very readable, yeah. very easy to understand, very easy for them to read themselves in their own devotional life. So uh, the bottom line, all the translations have their strengths and weaknesses, but because of their faithfulness to the original manuscripts and, and to the uh, papyri scrolls that were subsequently produced under such providential care of our Heavenly Father, whatever version you've got, you can say with confidence, this is the Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God. Yeah. This is the Holy Spirit-inspired so Word of God. So you would say any of the faithful evangelical translations, be it the King James yeah. or the NIV? New King James, New, King. New American Standard, yeah. ESV, uh, NIV, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Right. Now, because the arguments or debates continue to rage as we close, could I just reference a couple resources our, our, our friends may want to look look into? Uh, one of them um, is called uh, the King James Only Controversy. Can You Trust the Modern Translations by James R. White? Um, So again, the King James Only Controversy, Can You Trust the Modern Translations by James R. White? Great resource to to work your way through uh, the the King James Only argument. Nick, I've heard people jokingly say, well, if the King James was good enough for the Apostle Paul, it should be good (laughs) enough for us, right? Well, you know the the fallacy there, of course. Absolutely. All right. But a lot of people feel that way. And so that would be one good resource. Another good one is by uh, D.A. Carson, Dr. D.A. Carson, The King James Version Debate, A Plea for Realism. The King James Version Debate, A Plea for Realism by D.A. Carson, faithful reform scholar, a theologian. Both are classics. Yeah, they're both classics. And these may help our friends, uh, you know, work their way through the issue if they're really wrestling with this. But again, uh, I don't want to say each to his own because we probably should stay away from the living Bible, especially after you read, you know, had me read Acts 13, 48. (laughs) But but all of the modern translations are so faithful. And by the way, when I go to the original, as I'm preaching through different books of the Bible, the Novum Testamentum um, Grace Greek, Nestle Island, is used by a lot of the modern translations. And every translation has, I'm not going to call them errors, but I'm going to call different interpretations of the Greek words yeah. or the Hebrew, the Biblia Hebraica, as the case may be. Um, and so all of the translations have their strengths and weaknesses is what it boils down to. They really do. And so whatever each one is, is best fed by, in the, all the Word of God, whatever feeds you best, the Word of God, that's the translation for you. I jokingly said to Brother Mike Rose, who likes the King James the other day, <laughs> yeah. I in church on Sunday, I told him I'm an NIV onlyist. And he laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But Absolutely. Thank you, Pastor. That's I hope very it's helpful. helpful to our friends, our listening friends. And, uh, and Nick, it's been fun doing this with you as well. Oh, absolutely. This was a great one. If you're interested in those resources, we're going to put a uh, description, our brother Kyle will put in the description, a link for both of those books. And if you have another question for us, please send it to us either in the comment sections of this video or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or 
on Spotify. You can go to our church website, Pocono Reformed BibleChurch.com. And there's a place all the way at the bottom of the homepage where you can send us a question. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, everyone. God bless.